Mm. So now that I've got the emotional rant out of the way, I can proceed to what I actually want to do, which is give you an overview each morning of what my brain is doing with the project of the Invisible University. This is probably <laughs> um, only going to be a thing during the setup phase because I'm expecting to get fabulously busy once this project is actually underway. So this morning, this morning, let's go back a day, let's go back one day. This is a morning log. So yesterday, in my dream, there was one prominent symbol. There were other symbols, but one was especially prominent, which personally, I want to introduce into my system of psychology because Freud can suck it. But anyway, dream interpretation is Jung. We're going to get into that conflict at some point with the research and it's going to be really fun. But first, yeah. Necromancy, learning that, raising the dead, getting Freud and Jung to battle it out. And then I can write my own version. That's the plan. It's more simple than it sounds, but... I'm getting ahead of myself. The dream symbol yesterday morning was a person who I'm still very much in love with appearing, slitting my throat. The blood comes pouring out and it's the most gorgeous shade of ruby. And amidst the blood, there's also just clumps of shit. Just actual... I'm glad I didn't smell it because I almost felt like I could have smelt it. But I don't get smells very often in my dreams, barely at all. So the clumps of shit and the ruby red blood hit the floor. And there was no emotion attached to it, but the symbol itself is a release of trauma plus, you know, release of bullshit. So that was a good symbol. And that was the day when I decided to focus my dream logs on the main symbol, because I think that's way more useful and productive. So after the no more bullshit trauma, uh, this morning I woke up and the dream symbol was someone from the squatting scene who recently broke ties with me, leading me back into a veritable nightmare hotel. Thank you, priest, for that, uh, au revoir. Thank you, priest, for getting that song stuck in my head. It's not the same. English is lacking. Once I hit linguistics, I'm going to go into a comparison of English and German, because that's my two native languages, more or less. The UK has certainly destroyed my grasp on English grammar, at least in high-stress situations like yesterday's video. Today I seem to be doing fine, which is good, because for a while I felt like I was losing my voice. And that is very disconcerting for someone who all their life has identified with their voice and has it had suppressed a lot of the time. So losing my voice in a language that I used on the internet to explore my emotions and express my emotions has just turned me into a psychopath, I suppose. It's, it's very interesting psychology dynamics that I may or may not at some point analyze the internet is a useful tool but growing up on the internet as a netizen in its early days well in its second age I would say because the year 2000 made a difference didn't it 90s internet is not the same as 2000s internet 2000s is when it got commercialized or corporate, you know, the first seeds of corporate greed made their way onto the internet. Though apparently YouTube and Google, Google, I don't know, but YouTube didn't start out that way. And now it is the most corporate sponsor on the internet. But here we are. Anyway, internet studies. Let's see how often these pop up in my rants. I'm just letting out ideas and then later I'm thinking about what I actually said so I know where to take my research next. These logs are not the actual content of the Invisible University, this is just behind the scenes. This is just to give you an idea of the day-to-day -day minutiae. I'm going to cap them at five minutes, which is now, 
because that's when usually my computer turns off like the screen and five minutes is enough. So thank you for listening and I'll see you tomorrow.